Up on offer today is the B760M Steel Legend Wi-Fi from ASRock. Two and a half gigabit LAN, pretty decent rear I.O., decent built-in expandability, PCIe 5 storage, uh, it ticks all the boxes, but what can you actually build with this? Can you rock an i9, 1300K or KS in this board? What about an i7? Would this be more appropriate for that? It is micro ATX. We should do a build. <laughs> All right, in the box, you get two SATA cables, rubber duck antennas. I really wish these were higher end antennas. It really, it's tough when you're using Wi-Fi 6E if your main connection is just wireless when the antennas are behind the computer. And the reason is because the computer's made of metal and radio signals going through the metal case, not really super good. So having a movable Wi-Fi antenna on a little wire is dramatically better than this. So I always complain about those. Got a Steel Legend postcard from ASRock, our Steel Legend installation manual, and lots and lots and lots of M.2 screws, as this board has a plurality of M.2 connectors. Actually, let's talk about the block diagram for this motherboard first, because there's something interesting going on here. Now, when we talk about this board and the Steel Legend series from ASRock, ASRock is very careful to try to carve a niche out for themselves as, okay, you can buy this board and you can run a high-end CPU with it, but it's not necessarily gonna have all the bells and, and whistles of a higher end motherboard, but it's also not gonna be a, a significant cost. So if you just want a platform for your 12th or 13th generation CPU, yeah, you can run Alder Lake CPUs in this motherboard no problem. So if you see like the 12700K on sale, you can pick it up and it'll work great in this. If you prefer not to overclock or even have the ability to overclock, you can also get the non-K CPUs. And I think that's really where this motherboard shines. <laughs> now for the 13th generation, Intel has locked down the B-Clock overclocking. There weren't a lot of motherboards for Alder Lake that would let you do B-Clock overclocking. ASRock had planned to come out with a few boards that had B-Clock overclocking so that you could use it with 12th or 13th gen CPUs, but it doesn't work at all with 13th gen CPUs. So that plucky little i5-12400 that I love that you could do B-Clock overclocking on just a couple of boards, all that is pretty much done away with. Intel doesn't want you to do that. They don't want you to get anything for free. That CPU was like $130 at one point, and that was the deal of the century. There's not a deal on the market today that's as good of a deal as that i5-12400 was a year ago. Why am I talking about that when we're talking about the Steel Legend motherboards? Because the Steel Legend motherboards usually, these are the right balance to be able to sort of thread the needle on those kinds of situations. If you put a 12900K in here or a 13900K, it's going to run hot. You're going to be at the very edge of what this motherboard is capable of, and I'm very hesitant to recommend that. So, I have three i9 13900K CPUs, one of which was supplied by Intel that I do various testing on and that sort of thing. And I have one 13900KS. Now the KS, the integrated memory controller, that CPU's been. Intel's been, been bending these 13th gen CPUs since day one. They plan 13900KS since day one. And so they've been plucking the best CPUs out since the beginning. And that shows in the 13900KS, we're talking about overclockability, undervoltability, all the other stuff like that. For this platform for underclocking a 13900KS, it can work but it's still gonna have worse VRM thermals and worse top 1% performance than you're really gonna get. I mean, Intel is letting you run 320 watts with a 13900KS. All of that background is just to tell you that the ideal CPU for this motherboard is probably the 13700K or the 13900 no K or the 13700 no K. The 13900 no K, even though it doesn't have the K, this motherboard will let it run with an extra 100 watts of power indefinitely. It's the PL1, PL2 stuff that I've covered in other videos. If you've never heard of that before, basically it's the Intel Turbo duration. How long can this CPU turbo? How long are we going to run at 5.7 to 5.9 gigahertz, depending on your overclock with your K CPU? It's a function of thermals, how cool you can keep your CPU, which is gonna be the, the most top shelf cooling, your motherboard, how much power can your motherboard deliver, and your CPU. Now this motherboard can turbo, but not indefinitely, and not at that highest 320 watt specification, but 253 watts, 253 watts is also pushing it, which is why the 
13700K with its 8 P cores and 8 E cores is a little easier from a VRM standpoint. Most of the time you don't need the extra wattage unless you're pushing, you're also pushing the E cores. For gaming and things like that, you're not really using the E cores as part of the gaming, you're only using those performance cores, the P cores with your Intel CPU. So for 13700K with overclocking, with the best cooling, you aren't really gonna lose any performance. And this motherboard is significantly less expensive than your Z790 and your, 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 other, uh, your, your other sorts of motherboards. And it is also true that most of the highest end overclocking features are reserved for that Z790 chipset. Ugh, Intel and their you know, boxing and limiting and checking all the boxes and ticking all the boxes. And then when you find a way through, like the 12500, <sighs> nope, nope. You're using a processor or you're using a component the way we don't intend. Nope, I don't like that with this platform. Anyway, our M.2 layout, pretty awesome here. We've got our M.2 here at the top, which is connected directly to our CPU. And then we've got two at the bottom, one of which includes a heat sink and the other one is just open. And then we've got our M.2 Wi-Fi. This version of the board does include built-in Wi-Fi 6E, which is awesome. And that is an Intel Wi-Fi solution. Our 2.5 gigabit NIC, that is a Realtek Dragon 2.5 gigabit NIC. And we've also got, you know, our analog audio out and some other stuff. If you're thinking, wait a minute, this rear IO looks an awful lot like the Sonic the Motherboard. Another, you know, if you're into Sonic the Hedgehog, this is, it should look familiar because it basically is. Now I think this is the same six layer PCB and the same configuration, the same DDR5 6800 OC max reported from ASRock. I would certify this motherboard for 6200, 6400. 6000 is safe, 6200, 6400 is pretty safe. You probably could run 6800, but my particular kits of memory and 6400 was a lot easier to get working. It was basically plug and play. 6800, I think, is pushing it with a six layer PCB and it didn't work exactly perfectly out of the box, but 6200 and beyond is pretty good. So, I mean, that, the memory speed doesn't even really matter unless you're getting into like 40, 80, 40, 90 territory, or you're looking at this motherboard a year or two on and there's something that's come out that's even faster than the 4090 and you're saying, hmm, yes, don't want there to be a bottleneck. Then memory speeds may matter to you. We've also got the dual eight pin power connector up here at the top, suggesting that you could deliver more than 400 watts to your CPU, but really you only have to connect one of those. I mean, you should connect both of them for stability and if your power supply has the connector, but you really only need one. We've also got Type-C for the front panel, 10 gigabit, very nice. And our dual five gigabit, 30 pin header for USB, two USB 2.0 headers for any internal peripherals that you're gonna run, four SATA ports, which I don't really see as a problem, and ample four pin fan headers. Two at the top, two at the bottom, and one at the front. For RGB, we've got a single 50-50 header at the bottom, and then we've got three digital headers, just as we saw on our Sonic motherboard, one at the bottom, two at the front edge of the motherboard. This motherboard also features the embedded DisplayPort connector, which I've covered before. You may have seen the build that I did in the Lee and Lee Dynamic 011 with a built-in LCD screen. So if you wanna do a case mod where you incorporate a built-in LCD display, you can go out with a special ASRock cable from this to any embedded DisplayPort 30-pin connector, uh, dis you know, display LCD screen. It's gonna provide power and data over a single connector here for that display. My display is 1080p, but you can also run 1366 by 768 or 1280 by 720 because it's embedded display port. Full HD 60 Hertz on that connector is no problem. And the cable can be hidden out of the way behind your motherboard because it's literally on the rear of the motherboard, that embedded display port connector. That's gonna run off the iGPU. So if you do set that or you set it up and you've got an add in GPU and it's not working, you will have to enable multi-monitor in the BIOS. I mentioned that in uh, some other videos and somebody ran out and bought one of these and they said, oh crap, I can't get the display to work. And it's like, well, you, when you put in an add-in GPU, it disables the GPU that's built into the CPU. By default, you will also need to enable the GPU that's built into the CPU. You kind of want that anyway for quick sync these days. That shouldn't, shouldn't be the default. I think it may not be the default in newer BIOSes, but uh, you want to enable the, explicitly make sure that the BIOS says that your integrated GPU is enabled and your added GPU can be the primary one, and then you wanna make sure that you get your Intel GPU drivers installed. So, otherwise, when we're talking about the 12700K, this motherboard is basically no compromises. You're gonna run into thermal limits from your CPU cooling solution before you run into power delivery limits of this motherboard. This motherboard is right on the edge. ASRock has been pretty careful to try to give you the least motherboard that you need for the best 13900K, so you could theoretically run a 13900K on this, but, I would recommend that only for gaming workloads and not the most extreme workloads, or just forget about the 13900K and go for the 13700K. The 13700K is a better choice if you're more worried about gaming than rendering or anything else anyway. I mean, you get 16 E-cores and eight 
performance cores with the 13900K versus 8 and 8 with the, you know, it seems like you're giving up 8 efficiency cores, 8 Skylake cores, which really only matters if you're running lots and lots and lots of background tasks. It does not matter for gaming. So I think a high-end gaming build from this, it's kind of a no-brainer. And you could actually even get a lesser expensive board if you are looking at that i5, which is pretty cool, 12 cores, uh, or one of the other lesser expensive uh, CPUs. You could run the 12500 in this as well, but it's not gonna give you B-clock overclocking or anything like that because it's a newer chipset. <sighs> Intel's really locked down. They, they sort of freaked out over that whole B-clock overclocking because the 12500 at 100-ish dollars was too good of a deal and they've made it basically impossible to get. You gotta look at elsewhere for, you know, the deal of the century type builds, but you know, it is what it is. Now for this build, I got the Fractal Mesh 2 Mini and our power supply, Thermaltake, the Smart 700. Why? Because this is for someone else. And these are cheap. So this is a 700 watt power supply. That's not actually a 700 watt power supply. It's really only 630 watts. This is a, a technique here. You gotta look at the labels for these. 630 watts on the 12 volt side and then 700 watts total power supply. It's not really misleading when it says that it's 700 watts. This thing can deliver 700 watts, but you're limited to 630 watts on the 12 volt side. So when you do the napkin math and say, how many watts is my GPU at peak and how many watts is my CPU at peak? Those are 12 volt figures only. The other stuff like your, your M.2, you know, that's not using 12 volts. Well, mm, that's not always true. But generally, not 12 volts, not gonna contribute to the 630 watts part of the wattage. It'll use from the, the other 130 watts or so. But yeah, I mean, it's an inexpensive power supply. It'll get the job done. It'll get the job done with two PCIe connectors on a shared cable. That's all you get, no 4080. No 4070, 6600, maybe 6750 from AMD, maybe. But again, 13700K. For the cooling, it's our MSI Core Liquid S240. Why? It's got a screen, it's got some bling. If you're doing a build like this, pro tip, spend the money on a better power supply or GPU or literally anything else. But hey, this was on sale, so it didn't really cost anything. Now personally, I think it's easier to install the mounting hardware for the CPU first. Basically, we pop out our little piece of plastic and we screw in the little screws that it comes with and then we're good to go for that part of it. And our motherboard's ready to mount. There's a simple joy that comes from doing something with your hands like this. <laughs> so for this build, we have to be careful. A 240 millimeter cooler in the top with this motherboard because the memory sits so high, your Corsair Dominator memory is not gonna work. It's too tall. OEM memory works fine. They've got some just generic crucial memory in there that doesn't have a heat spreader or anything else. Plenty of clearance for that. So you gotta be careful with these builds. And if this is your first time building and it's like, oh, I picked all these parts and I just changed one thing. Uh, you gotta double check all your measurements. Now I could put the radiator in the front, but then that's gonna limit the width of my GPU as well, which is not an ideal situation. Pretty good bundle overall, pretty reasonable build quality considering the costs. Costs sort of factor in heavily when you're considering complexity, the build, the trade-offs for what you're getting. The Realtek ALC897 audio, it might be nicer to have a little bit better audio for gaming. The 897 is pretty long in the tooth at this point, but uh, it gets the job done. I'm one of this level one has been a quick look at the Steel Legend Z760M Micro ATX. Micro ATX is sort of the new ITX. I like Micro ATX for builds. I like that the PCIe slot is located here, so you can use this with a four slot GPU. Totally awesome. You do have the, the single PCI Express by one slot if you're rocking a dual slot GPU, but you know, it is what it is. All right, I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums.